may I request Dr. Jyotirmay Vishwas, sir, please do uh, talk on ophthalmic pathology for clinicians. I think everybody knows Dr. Jyotirmay Vishwas. He is from Shankaranatralaya. He is the head of the UVI department. And, uh, yeah. He has a vast experience in this topic, both pathology and UVI. Uh, we have had heard his talk many times. Sir, so over to you. Good evening. I'll be talking on ophthalmic pathology for the clinicians. I'd like to thank AIOS midterm um, session, ophthalmic pathology, uh, giving the opportunity. Ophthalmic pathology for the clinicians can be very important. And it was William Osler, a Canadian medic uh, clinician who told long back, 200 years back, as is our pathology, so is our practice. This is true in ophthalmic pathology also. Outline of that my talk is how to send ophthalmic pathology specimen. Basic question, what are the techniques used in ophthalmic pathology, stains used in ophthalmic pathology, what is the normal histology of the eye and adnexa and clinical pathological correlation in few ophthalmic diseases? So what we do in the histopathology department? We do the fixation, grossing, tissue processing, paraffin embedding, sectioning, and finally staining, and see under the microscope. Fixative used in the ophthalmic pathology and routine histopathology, we use 10% neutral buffered formalin. And cytology, we use 95% ethyl alcohol. Electron microscopy, 2.5% glutaraldehyde. We are less and less doing electron microscopy nowadays. So how much time is required for fixation? Corneal button, 6 hours. Globe or large orbital mass, 24 hours. Exentated specimen, 72 hours. Don't ask for report within 6 hours of an enucleated globe. We do the transformation first. We find out the location of the tumor. Where is the tumor located, a suspected intraocular tumor? Then we do the grossing. After the grossing, we, before the grossing, we cut the sec globe into the sections, pupil optic nerve sections we make, and then we see under the microscope. Then the gross microscope. Mm. Then we put on the automatic tissue processor when the specimen is processed through the separate graded alcohol. Then we embed in the paraffin wax. And finally, you do the sectioning, three to six micron sections is taken, which is, in case of uh, frozen section, we use the cryostat. The temperature is minus 20 degrees centigrade. This is a basal cell carcinoma, and you can see that there is a tumor mass extending to the margin, and is a frozen section uh, tumor, frozen section uh, study. Cytology, where you do this, use the machine called cytospin, which uh, revolves 1,000 RPM for five minutes. And the cells are concentrated like this. And we can see elegantly the cytology of the specimen's concentrated smear. This is a calcophore stain showing clumps of fungus. You can see the fungus ball over there. Stains used in ophthalmic pathology is a routine staining, hematoxyl and eosin stain. Stains for organism fungus, gomodimethanamine silver stain, as I shown. Um, I will be showing bacteria, gram stain, brown hops method, acid fast bacilli, gel Nelson stain. This is the hematoxyl neosin stain, cytoplasm appears pink and the nuclei appears blue and this is the flexner intestinal rosettes is seen with a central clear lumen. In case of fungus, we do the gram, gomori methanamine silver stain. Fungus will appear black in the background of the blue color. Dill Nielsen stain uh, showing A, B is uh, uh, the pink color uh, bacilli is seen under the blue background. This is a conjunctival tuberculoma which is uh, uh, excised and the specimen on paraffin section on special stain shown the acid fast bacilli. What are the special stains? Connective tissue mason trichrome stain, mucin, alcyon blue or periodic acid sip stain, iron, pulse prussian blue, fat, oil red, this is done in the frozen section, calcium, alizarin red, amyloid, congo red. Trichrome stain, this is an example of a granular corneal dystrophy and you can see the 
clear spaces in between the corneal opacity and hyaline material is seen on the trichome stain as a red color. And this is a macular dystrophy when the diffuse opacity is there, there is no space seen over there. Alcyon blue showing the acid mucopolysaccharide stain, staining blue in color, blue in color, and colloidal iron also staining blue in color of acid mucopolysaccharide in mucopolysaccharidosis. Lattice corneal dystrophy, where the lattice lines are there, crisscross lines, and these lines are actually amyloid material, which stains positive with Congo red, and if you use the polarized light, is the apple green birefringence will be seen. In case of Sebastian's gland carcinoma, you will get the foamy cytoplasm with the tumor cells. And you can see you the oil or stain in frozen section with the fat lobules within the malignant cells will appear as the red color. Normal histology of the eye, this is the lead, it contains the epithe epidermis, dermis, dermis contains striated muscle fibers, mevumian glands, hair follicles, accessory glands, etc. And this is a conjunctiva, normal conjunctiva, which con contain uh, goblet cells, the, the foamy cells, which are pink in color with acid mucopolysaccharide seen inside that one, and the stroma has got vascular channels. And this is a normal cornea, five-layer epithelium, Bowman's layer, stroma, desmus membrane, endothelium cells, four layers. And this is the um, normal lens is seen over there, and this is the optic nerve head, and there is a lamina cubrosa is seen. And this is a whole globe in the cut section of the globe stained with the hematoxylin neosin stain. What is this tumor? This is a cut section of the globe enucleated in a two-year-old child. This is a chalky white mass, typically characteristic of retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma is important um, to find out uh, the histopathology pattern, you can see the flexner intestinal rosette, homarite rosette. Um, the flexner intestinal rosette has got clear lumen, homarite rosette do not have clear lumen. And you need to see the optic nerve in, uh, head invasion is there or not. There can be non uh, uh, rosettes or flores that is called undifferentiated type of retinoblastoma. What we want to see in case of retinoblastoma to rule out coital invasion as well as the optic nerve invasion, quadral invasion and optic nerve invasion indicates poor prognosis for the life. Role of the pathologist. Role of the pathologist is to confirm the clinical diagnosis, to identify the extent of the tumor spread, to assess the risk for metastasis, to guide the clinician in the management. And this is a malignant melanoma of the choroid, mushroom shaped pigmented tumor mass, Collar stud appearance is seen over there. And these are the spindle cells, tightly packed cells with the insignificant uh, cytoplasm. And nuclei is a um, prominent epithelial cell, is the lot of cytoplasm is there. Nucleus and nucleoli is prominent. Mixed is both spindle and epithelioid cells are seen. Orbit is a Pandora's box. You can get any kind of tumor. This is a 24-year-old man who has got axial proptosis. You can see intraconus mass lesion. And histopathology is showed adenoid cystic carcinoma with the cribriform pattern of the tumor cells. And there is a perineural invasion is seen. This is a 60-year-old man, painless swelling in the lid. And you can see the smooth the homogeneous mass over the eyelid. And histopathology showed monomorphic lymphoid cells suggestive of non-Hitchkin's lymphoma. And you need to do the immunohistochemistry. Immunohistochemistry with the B cell marker and T cell marker is done. And here B cell marker is positive, indicating that this is a B cell lymphoma, which is most common uh, to, uh, lymphoma in the orbit. So in conclusion, histopathology provided the gold standard in diagnosis, guides clinician in management, intraoperative like basal cell carcinoma, frozen section diagnosis, post-operative tumor extent and invasion in retinoblastoma, and the excess scleral extension in malignant melanoma of the choroid. And you can understand the disease better by clinical pathological correlation. Yes, it can be interesting also. So this has been told by, as I mentioned earlier, William Mosler, Canadian clinician, who told, uh, who is a legendary clinician, who said, as is our pathology, so is our practice. This is also true in ophthalmic pathology. As is our ophthalmic pathology, so would be our practice. Thank you very much.
Any, any comments, your side? So, our moderator, may I ask to have your comments? Any questions from the audience? Sir, uh, do you take samples from outside or you process the yeah, samples? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we take outside, uh, not only from uh, this country, also from all other yes. countries also. So, okay. what is the process of sending samples to you? They, they put fix in the 10% neutral buffer formalin, coriary, tight, put in a tight sealed container and send it. We are seeing the specimens, about 3,000 specimens per year we are seeing. Most of the specimens are from outside the country. Outside the uh, Chennai. And uh, uh, what is the financial implications? Uh, so we charge a minimum charge of that one. There is not really much consultation charge, processing charge which you can. Uh, we send the report by email. Yes. Uh, and if you request, you can send a glass slide and my micro photograph also. Yeah, that's a important thing because uh, Dr. Jyotiramoy Bishwas is one of the only person or one of the two persons doing ocular pathology in the country. And uh, if you have any doubt, you can always uh, send the samples. We'd like to uh, uh, have the address circulated so that uh, it comes with the uh, uh, Shankara Netrale Foundation. Of yeah, Shankara Netrale, you'll find. You just uh, Google it, my name, you'll get it there. Yeah. Dr. Jyotima Viswas. Thank you, sir, so, for a nice illuminating talk. And with this, we'll go to the next talk. Uh, yeah. Thank you.